All right. So does anybody want me to cover any questions on the practice final exam? Yes. Yes. What is it? Oh, I thought you said you didn't want 135. Okay. All right. We're going to first do. Quiet, please. The problem that is numbered 135 on the CP exam and on the honors exam it's 133. Okay, and the question says dihydrogen oxide in aqueous solution decomposes, I'm sorry, dihydrogen dioxide decomposes to produce water and oxygen gas. Write a balanced chemical equation with physical states. Uh, to the reaction described above. So dihydrogen oxide means that uh, when you use prefixes like di, it means you have a covalent compound. The prefix is di, tri, uh, when we're talking about um, non-organic compounds, tetra, penta, and so forth, those are reserved for naming covalent compounds. So dihydrogen means I have H2, Dioxide means I have O2. And it says it's in an aqueous solution, so that means we're going to label this as being AQ. It says it decomposes. A decomposition reaction means I have a more complex chemical that's going to break apart into separate pieces like this. That's what decomposition means. So it says in the question that, or in the, yes, it is a question, in the, in the, preview to the question. It says it decomposes. So we're going to decompose it into water, and the formula for water is H2O or HOH. And we're going to show that as being liquid. There's no indication there's a lot of heat here to turn it into steam. No indication there's a lot of cold here to turn it into ice. So we would assume it's going to be liquid water. And in addition to creating water, we're going to create oxygen gas. Well, a gas we're going to label as being G. And oxygen gas is always O2. Unless you're told otherwise, it's always O2. Now, there's uh, atomic oxygen, which is simply oxygen. But that is so rare, we can ignore it for the most part. And there is a small amount of ozone in the atmosphere. That's O3. But if it just says oxygen, that's just O2. All right, now we need to balance the equation. Uh, I've given the physical states. The question asks you to do that. Now we're ready to balance the equation. So we only have two elements, H and O. We're going to make uh, our grid for doing an atom inventory. And we're going to start by counting the elements we have. We have two hydrogens and two oxygens on the left. On the right, we have two hydrogens, but we have one oxygen here plus the two oxygens here, so currently we have three oxygens. And so I'm going to put a three down here in our grid. So what we want to do now is to try to get the number of elements exactly the same on both sides. Um, the hydrogen is already balanced. The oxygens are not yet balanced. Um, the only way that we can get the oxygen is to balance is if we change both the coefficient in front of this species water and this species here, which I call dihydrogen dioxide. Um, so what I've taught you to do though in this class is anytime you have an even number of oxygens on one side and an odd number on the other, you go through and multiply everything in the equation by two. So I'm going to put a two in front of this species and this species, but I'm not going to do it in front of this one yet. Okay, so now we've got to change the number of um, elements or atoms on both sides. So the hydrogens and oxygens are going to change, and the hydrogens and oxygens are going to change over here. So if I have two hydrogens in the formula times the two coefficient, that means I have four hydrogens. If I have two oxygens times the two coefficient, that's four oxygens. Over here, if I have two hydrogens in the formula times two, that's four hydrogens. And two times one oxygen gives us two oxygens plus this two here. So that gives me four oxygens, and everything's balanced. 
So the balanced equation is this. This is the atom inventory, the tool we used to balance this equation. 